one Halloween night within the district of old Gothicville of Cityopolis, we find the front door to the home of businessman Bert Crotchsweat. All right. All right. I'm coming. I'm coming. Damn it. All this trouble over this stupid fault are all about candy and what? What? Oh, no! A, a flaming bag! I've got to stamp it out before the fire spreads! <coughs> oh, oh, no! It's full of dog poo! Bold Damn it! You. I, wait, <laughs> what, what's that sound? Huh? <laughs> Suddenly, a massive explosion erupts from the bag of flaming dog poo. Sending crutch sweat, smashing back into his own front door. Soon, all is silent except for the taunting, mocking tones of a small recording within the still flaming bag of dog poo. Sergeant Bullocks, what do we got? Well, wet one. Uh, we got Crotch Sweat's leg up in uh, the tree in his front yard, and his other leg in the window there, and the rest of him uh, is smeared all over the inside of the front foyer. Yeah, all courtesy of an explosive hidden within an old fashioned Halloween prank. A fatal huh? prank, to be oh, sure. No, night, night. And who could possibly be the Jeez. prince of criminal fatal pranks? None other than the fooler. <laughs> Damn it, Boo! Don't interrupt me like that. No, everybody knows this fooler. His stupid recording still going on. Yeah, but I don't know. Something doesn't smell right about this. <laughs> That's all that burnt dog poo. Hoo yeah, well, I don't need you two to back off. I don't need you idiots tromping around through this crime scene. There's going to be a lot of attention on this murder as Crutch Sweat was a prominent businessman. So just keep out and don't ruin the investigation. There's no need for further investigation, wet one, as the killer has already left his signature. Signature? I don't see a signature. All I see is that stupid fooler recording and a flaming bag of dog shit. <laughs> Shut up, boo Get your ass in the night cruiser. And soon, the night cruiser can be seen streaking through the streets of Cityopolis. Man, it really sucks the fooler had to go and kill somebody tonight. Now we gotta do work and miss out on the annual Halloween costume party at club night. Yeah, well, it's probably just as well. What, what do you mean? Well, last year's party really creeped me out. I don't want to have to go through that again. Oh, yeah. Boogeyman made that... that Bewitcher guy opened that hole in the middle of the air. <laughs> I wonder what that was all about. I don't know, and I don't care to ever know. <laughs> Cause you're scared. Damn right. Look, you want to mess with a doorway to hell? Be my guest, but leave me out of it. <laughs> well, there better be some candy left over when we get back. Of course, well, that doorway to hell opens up again. I don't think I'll want any of it. Cause the last time it made the whole club smell like a butthole. It took Smiddly a week to clean that out of there. Yeah, but wait, of course, candy. Well, what do you mean? It's simple, Bobo. I seem to recall news of the fooler taking up residence within an old Van Putin subsidiary, a factory, a candy factory. Yes, Sugar Daddy Candy. Huh, I'd forgotten all about him and old Lady Van Putin getting together. Oh man. That's disgusting! Yeah, but they've since separated, battling it out over the control of the Van Putin fortune. Here's the fooler has managed to maintain control of Sugar Daddy Candy as one of the Van Putin assets. Huh. With all that Van Putin money, I, I wonder why he wanted to kill that Crutch Sweat guy. Well, I didn't know Crutch Sweat well, but being in certain circles of the business community of Cityopolis, I had heard tell he wasn't exactly a man on the up and up. <laughs> well, 
He's up all over the place now. <laughs> oh, all right, Bubo. Damn it. But the point of the matter is, Bubo, even if there is no rhyme or reason for the murder of Crutch Sweat, it simply proves that despite all the money that the fooler was able to acquire through his marriage to Van Putin, a tiger can never change his stripes. Tiger? What's that got to do with the fooler? <coughs> never mind, Bubo. Oh, look. There it is. Sugar Daddy Candy Factory. Sugar Daddy? Huh. I ain't never heard of that kind of candy. That's because Sugar Daddy develops candy exclusively for adult novelty stores. Damn. There's a lot of trucks out here. What's going on? Hmm. It appears they're in the middle of loading up and shipping out product. We could use that as a distraction and then able to slip in and apprehend the fooler. Come on, let's go. And soon our masked marvels slip in to the factory floor of Sugar Daddy Candy. Look, there he is, Bobo, talking with his crewmen. Hmm, I have to take this very carefully, be able to catch him without too much interference from his henchmen. Huh, they just look like ordinary factory workers to me. If they work for the fooler, then they're henchmen. Oh, yeah. Huh, you know, this candy looks stupid. I mean, some of it looks like a flower, but those other pieces of candy, they look like a pee pee! <laughs> Shut up, Boobo! Oh no! Night, night, Boobo! What the hell are they doing? No shit! Must deploy! Night, night, yes! And once again, as a result of sheer panic, Night, night does indeed deploy his explosive 99 gas, which makes short work of the floor. And. <laughs> Stop right there, Fuller. There's no escape. Night, night. As it's all <coughs> your horrible, lethal scheme ends tonight. Uh, damn it, Night Night. How are you able to figure out my plan to fool people into buying my sugar daddy candy secretly laced with an addictive narcotic, thereby turning them into junkies that would be completely dependent on me for their next fix? Uh. Wait, <laughs> that's what, stupid. What? Who the hell wants to buy candy that looks like a pee pee? Uh, <laughs> Shut up, Bobo! <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, fool? Is this some clever ruse to get uh, out of the guilt of the murder you uh, committed against Crush Sweat? Crutch what? What are you talking about? Alright, back what? off, Night Night. Wet one! What are you doing here? What I'm always doing. Police work. Look, Commissioner! <laughs> this kitty looks like a pee pee! <laughs> yeah. Well, wet one, since you're here to do police work, I suggest you carry it out. Here is the suspect in the murder of Crutch Sweat. Put him under arrest. The only one to be placed under arrest is you and Boobo. <laughs> what? <laughs> what insane grounds do you reach that conclusion? Well, the several counts of assault against these men, not to mention the exposure to a potentially toxic chemical, and, of course, the massive property damage. <laughs> Quit horsing around, Whitwin! The fooler is guilty of murder. Well, that's where you're wrong. Turns out, he's not the suspect. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's insane. He clearly is. No, no, no. He is it. After doing police work, you know, like professional detectives do, well, several interviews with several witnesses can place him at another scene what? at the time of the crime. Uh, Besides, there's been another murder. Wait, another murder? That's right, Night Night. It appears a man by the name of Peter Glute Pimple became the victim of, at first, what seemed to be a simple Halloween prank of his house being teepeed. <laughs> but this particular brand of toilet paper ended up engulfing him to the point to where he asphyxiated. Eww, and once again, the recording paper. of the signature calling card of the fooler was left at the scene. What the hell is going on? Who is trying to frame me for murder? Well, that's the question of the night, isn't it, fooler? I think you want to come downtown with us and we can try to figure out who might have it in for you in order to pull this off. I will not do anything until you charge Night Night and Bobo with assault and battery and damage to my property. Oh, you can forget that, fooler. Bobo and I were clearly here in the 
duty of justice. <laughs> duty. <laughs> Just told you night night the man has an alibi. He didn't kill crotch sweat. He certainly didn't kill glute pimple. I'm not talking about those crimes. I'm talking about the crime of drug trafficking. What? It appears night nuts got a point there, Commissioner. The boys and I just found several drones of illegal narcotics in the back room of the factory. Uh, uh, oh, yeah? Uh, uh, oh, shit. Well, Fooler, this certainly changes things. But night, night. Who the hell killed Crush Sweat and Glute Pimple? I don't know, Bobo. It could be that this is indeed someone who has a grudge against the Fooler, and that could be a multitude of suspects. Or it could be the sinister work of a serial killer whose modus operandi is to pose as costume supervillains. Or maybe he's just some asshole who dressed up like the fooler for Halloween! <laughs> oh no! Will the murders of Crotch Sweat and Glute Pipple ever be solved? Well, maybe we'll find out in the next exciting adventure of Night Night. This has been a Nail Sin production. The Night Night theme song is performed by Alistair White and his lovely wife, Heather. Incidental music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. All characters are performed by me, Douglas Nelson. Join us again, won't you? And now, it's time for City City News! Starring your anchors, Peter Hungmule and Trixie Turner. Buddy with sports and Sparky with the weather. And now, here's Peter. Hello, I'm Peter Hungmule. Trixie is on assignment. Tonight's top news story is concerning the costume supervillain known as the Fooler who was facing several counts and drug charges. But suddenly, District Attorney Coleslaw has announced that he will drop all charges, saying he was forced to do so, thanks to Judge Snipsnort throwing out the drug evidence that police had collected from the property of the Fuller as a result of the presence of costume vigilante Night Night. So, uh, yeah, it is worth great reluctance that I am dropping charges against the vote. Uh, judges tend to frown on witnesses who uh, hide behind masks and uh, refuse to testify in court. City City News reached out to City City Police Department for comment on this matter, but as of yet, have yet to receive any comment thus far. Speaking of the fooler, in the midst of his ongoing battle with his estranged wife, Agatha Van Puden, over the Agatha Van Puden fortune, has now filed lawsuits against the city for wrongful arrest and defamation of his <laughs> character. If you thought I would simply go away and not seek justice for this injustice, well, fooled you! <laughs> He's also suggested that he would sue Night Night, but of course, without knowing his true identity, that seems unlikely. Meanwhile, a new costume vigilante has entered the scene, and unlike Night Night, who does use a series of very dangerous gadgets and chemicals, and other superheroes who utilize apparent superpowers, this new costume vigilante, calling himself the Puritan, simply shows up upon potential criminal suspects, pulls out a sawed-off shotgun, and blows them away. Last night, in the red light district of Le Mire Rouge, alleged pimp and costumed character known as Jive Turkey was in the midst of advertising his girls, when suddenly he and some of the women were attacked by the Puritan. A local, who just happened to be there for no apparent reason, caught the incident on his phone. Yeah, when you want to be naughty, my mm -hmm. bitch 
Judges, forces, guidance, wisest. Derek. Wisest die. Prepare for <laughs> judgment, <laughs> you <laughs> abomination. <laughs> Despite several witnesses on the scene, the Puritan was able to once again make good his getaway and remains at large. Meanwhile, Jive Turkey and the other victims of the Puritan managed to survive despite suffering severe wounds, all of which are now recuperating at City City Memorable Hospital. Despite having no direct involvement in this near massacre, some may say, that it is all possible that Night Night bears some responsibility as an influencer in this horrid and violent activity. Turn that shit off, Dick! I will not stand sports. for any more of that fake media trash! They want to watch sports! Man, then you should have watched the game, you idiot! No! I will not sit here and suffer within my own home at the diabolical hands and double whammy of a lying media enterprise and a corrupt law enforcement department trying to scapegoat me for their very own failures. The fooler may have fooled them, but he will never fool me. <laughs> and yet... It just goes to show that no good deed goes unpunished. Here I am, a man, putting his life on the line in the pursuit of justice for the entire city, maybe even the nation, possibly the entire world. And yet, even in my own home, I am burdened with character assassination whilst I endeavor to try to enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, it looks like you've been enjoying an awful lot of that Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> well, that... yeah, look at that gut. <laughs> Shut up, Dick. Yeah, but speaking of the fooler, y'all never did figure out who the hell really killed that uh, crotch sweat and glute pimple. Who? The two businessmen that were murdered on Halloween night. Oh, yeah. And then the real killer apparently framed the fooler for the killing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, look, I'll get to it when I can. Um, <laughs> You're kicking the can down the road. Now we got this Puritan guy we gotta figure out, too. Pretty soon the cases will pile up, and we'll never get to the bottom of it. With this calls for immediate action. Shut up, Dick. You don't dictate to me. The cases of murder requires deep, deep thought that takes, you know, time. As for the Puritan, he's nothing more than a wannabe loser trying to steal my thunder. He'll probably fail on his own, and if necessary, I'll take him down. But in the meantime, I'm gonna loosen my belt here and... Oh, man. Cool. I'll take a little Look nap on the sofa <laughs> while I contemplate these matters, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to it. It appears Club Knight is under attack. Oh man, some asshole done shot up the Club Knight side. It's brand new. Oh man, the crescent moon thing he fell down and busted up on the ground. Oh man, that is just so wrong. Who would dare desecrate the property of Knight, um, uh, Lyle Richmond? Lyle Richmond, Richmond. What? This, this is, is the Puritan. 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 Consider, Consider this a warning. Oh, no. If you dare to operate in your den of sin on a holy well. day like Christmas, you will face the judgment of the Puritan. <laughs> asshole, how dare he? Great gunman, night night. That guy looks like the same dude who shot up the job turkey and those hookers on the news! That's because he is the same guy, you idiot! He just said he was the Puritan! Oh, uh, well, uh, look, he's trying to get away on that motorcycle! We could catch up with him in the night cruiser! Yeah, we could, but, uh... I'm gonna have to, uh... You know, sit down on the sofa for a minute or two. What? Hey! What did I just get through telling you? These matters take deep, deep thought. You don't just rush into it. 
That's how mistakes are made. No! You just want to sit on your ass because your belly's all swollen because it's full of turkey and pumpkin uh, pie. Y- all right, that's enough out of you, dick. If you're so eager for action, get your ass in the kitchen and wash those dishes. No! In the meantime, since you mentioned pumpkin pie, I think I'll fix myself another slice before I sit down. Oh, man. Meanwhile, across town at City City Memorable Hospital, within the room where rests jive turkey as comfortably as one can possibly expect to be able to rest comfortably after suffering gunshot wounds, when suddenly he receives a visitor. Uh, who that? Who? Oh, nurse, that you? Uh, I could use some more morphine. Just a little more morphine, you know what I'm saying? What? Oh, no! You ain't the nurse! It's the Puritan! Oh! oh, 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 oh. Was this indeed the Puritan finishing off his victim of jive turkey? But how can that be when the Puritan is on the other side of town attacking Club Knight? Perhaps this and other questions will be answered in yet another episode of Night Night. This has been a Nail Sin production. The Night Night theme song is performed by Alistair White and his lovely wife, Heather. Incidental music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. All characters are performed by me, Douglas Nelson. Join us again, won't you? Within the halls of Poke Hard Penitentiary, we find a prison guard doing his nightly rounds when he comes upon the cell that is currently the residence of the notorious supervillain, the Pink Elephant. Alright, Elephant, come on, lights out. Oh, man, come on. I, I, I don't like to turn the lights out. I, I'm scared of the dark. Scared of the dark? Come on, Elephant, you're a grown man. Yeah, but sometimes it's like when it gets dark, it's as if the walls are, are closing in on me. What? It's like like being bad alive. Uh, yeah, it's, what's going on? It's like, it's literally like the walls are surrounding me and closing in on me. It's crushing me. What am I going to do? There's only one thing you can't do, boss. You got to open the door and get yourself out. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I got to open this door. There. Oh, oh, I'm out of there. Oh, man, that was close. It was literally like being buried alive. Wait, what the hell? I'm in a prison cell. What? Hey. How'd I get locked in here? Well, you opened the door, walked on in. Then I walked out and shut the door behind you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, how the hell could that happen? All right, I'll live with you. I exposed you to some of my hallucinogenic gas. And through my hypnotic suggestion, I made you see and experience whatever I wanted you to. (laughs) Come on, elephant, let me out of here. No can do, boss. I got me some Christmas shopping to do. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. At the office of Commissioner Charles Wetman, we find Charles Wetman, of course, in deep consultation with our masked marvels of Night Night and Boobo. So anyway, as you've heard, the pink elephant is once again at large. Great ghost through our past, Night Night! The pachyderm prince of pure evil strikes again! Yes, Boobo. However, you're not exactly correct. Merely committing a Prison break does not quite qualify as having struck again. Well, that has of yet to happen. But we must be on our toes and on our guard for his eventual sinister plot. You mean like dressing up as Santa Claus so you can kidnap the mayor's son, thereby extorting the mayor? That could very well be, but when? But could even the pink elephant be so 
evil. Yeah, he could, because that's exactly what he did this morning. <laughs> See? Take a look at this. It was all on the mall security cam. Oh, please. Oh, please don't hurt my boy. Don't hurt my boy. <laughs> Shut your mouth, fool. You know what you gotta do? Tell me where the head of Putin is right now. Putin. Now you will get your boy back. Well, I don't know where he is, but I, I, I don't, don't hurt my boy, Mr. Elephant. I'll send you all the police files to your phone. I'm sending it right now. Boy, give me everything you got, please. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting it now. There, we got, got the files. All right, now. Whoop, oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Man. It doesn't look like Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer ate your boy and turned him into reindeer poo. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord, that that was horrible. <laughs> Him is stupid. Reindeers don't eat meat. Damn it, Boo Boo. Yeah, don't sweat it too much, Night Night. Turns out the boy was never in any danger. It was what? all an illusion by the pink elephant. Uh, oh, well, yeah, typical of his modus operandi. Yeah, what appeared to be the boy was just a doll, and with the use of his hallucinogenic gases, he convinced the mayor that his son was in danger. We later found the real mall Santa in the men's room, laying a pool of his own pee. <laughs> he used his own gases on him, too, and he got so scared he, I don't know, passed out and pissed himself. <laughs> All right, Bobo, shut up! <laughs> Damn it. Commissioner, we must study this carefully and try to understand the motives of this madman. Well, didn't you listen? He pretty much spelled it out. He wanted information from the mayor on the Puritan. Uh, well, yes, Commissioner, but that still doesn't answer the question as to why the pink elephant would target the Puritan. As far as many of us know, oh, their paths have never crossed. Yeah, well, since the Puritan killed Jibe Turkey, and the Jibe Turkey, turns out, was an old buddy of the Pink Elephants, it stands to reason he wants revenge. <laughs> yeah, what a dumbass! Puritan did kill Jibe Turkey! What are you talking about, Bubo? There were several witnesses at the hospital watching him walk into his hospital room and blowing him away. That was an imposter, Commissioner. As the real Puritan was attacking me, uh... Club night at the exact moment that the murder of Jive Turkey took place. <laughs> and you're just telling me this crap now? Well, hey, that I... was weeks ago. Hell, I've had several detectives out there looking for the Puritan to catch him and charge him with the murder of Jive Turkey. No, yeah, well, I, you know, I, I was going to get to it. Oh my God. Wait, wait a minute. You're saying this, this means there was someone posing as the Puritan in order to kill... Jive Turkey, that's... That's just like the murders on Halloween night. Where someone posed as the fooler in order to frame him for the murders of two men. Crush Sweat and Glute Pimple. <laughs> Kill Crush Sweat with burning A series dog food. of murders <laughs> must inevitably leak to the perpetrator being a serial killer. Yeah, and we've already lost a lot of time, which... You could have made up if you hadn't kept certain information from me. Well, I know how it feels, quite one. How many times have you refused to inform me of one of my rogues gallery on the loose yet again? Oh, kiss my ass. Nevertheless, wet one, the solution to our current predicament is obvious. <laughs> oh, really? Well, this ought to be good. What's that, night night? It's simplicity itself, wet one. We have on our hands. A serial killer who enjoys killing a series of victims while posing as costume supervillains and vigilantes and blaming them for his many crimes. So, we simply wait for him to do it again and collect the evidence at that seat of the crime in the hopes that it will inevitably lead us to our killer. Whoa, that's brilliant, Night Night! <laughs> well... Yes. It's not going to be so brilliant for the next victim who's going to end up being dead at the hands of the killer. Well, listen, uh, when, uh, you know, you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. Uh, Commissioner? What is it, Chief O'Reilly? Oh, uh, we just got word that a Dr. Rusty Stain has been murdered, from the looks of it, by the freezer. Great balls of snow, night-night. That must be the next murder. Not necessarily, Bubo, as Dr. Rusty Stain was a chief business rival of the Freezer before he became the Freezer. Plus, he stole the Freezer's wife, so he 
probably wants to get back at him for that, too. So the motive is clear for the freezer. Yeah, but... But this does bear further investigation. Yeah, but it, it makes all the more bitter cover because it makes it sense that the freezer would want to kill Rusty Stain while the real killer wanted to kill him and just make it look oh, like the no, freezer. No, 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 dumbass. That would only be a true clue into that if, if Rusty Stain had nothing to do with the freezer. Then it wouldn't make any sense. But then it would show that the killer was an imposter. No, your theory's no, stupid. No, it's not. Shut up, Bobo. Commissioner, uh, uh, we're getting reports that the uh, freezer just robbed a uh, purple head jewelry store by freezing it and knocking down the wall and, and making off with uh, a whole buttload of diamonds. <laughs> Wait a minute. Chief O'Reilly, when did this happen? Uh, about less than 30 minutes ago. And, 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 and when did the murder of Dr. Rusty Stain occur? Oh. Well, uh, about 30 minutes ago. Uh, Chief O'Reilly, wh wh where was Dr. Rusty Stain murdered? Oh, at his office, uh, at his clinic. Good Lord. Dr. Rusty Stain's office is on the opposite side of the city for Purplehead Jewelry. Yes, and even more disturbing. This proves Bubo was correct. It, it, it does? I mean, yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! This has been a Nail Sin production. The Night Night theme song is performed by Alistair White and his lovely wife, Heather. Incidental music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. All characters are performed by me, Douglas Nelson. Join us again, won't you? It's New Year's Eve in Cityopolis, and everyone is preparing for the night's festivities to welcome in the new year in City City Center, where the mayor will perform the ceremonies. But... Unbeknownst to all, slowly approaching them over their skies, a Goodyear blimp. But it isn't so much the blimp itself, but rather its sudden pilot, the nefarious Pink Elephant. <laughs> Bye, Pink. Those guys at the hangar never knew what hit them. <laughs> yeah, they never do, baby. They never do. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what your hallucinogenic gas made them dream of. Didn't find no Pink. They were screaming about gremlins or some shit. Oh, well. So what's the plan, boss? You gotta help Cineopolis ring in the new year with a bang? <laughs> yeah, not exactly, big baby. I'm looking for one man in particular. Whoa, all this for one man? Yeah, it's that damn Putin bitch. After he done rubbed down Jive Turkey on Thanksgiving, I've been looking for him ever since, but damn, he's a hard one to find. So, what I'm gonna do is, just by the odds that he might actually be in the crowd in City City Center, Celebrating New Year's, I'm just going to drop my hallucinogenic gas, big old ton of it, all up inside this here blimp. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have, for a brief moment, hallucinogenic control over them peoples, and I'm going to make the Puritan reveal himself. <laughs> Whoa, man. Hey, hey, that's genius. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, God oh, damn it. What the oh, hell? No, someone's shooting at us. Oh, damn it. That there's a Christian sheep jet. You know what that means? We being shoot in by that damn night night. While the skies above Cityopolis play to a strange dogfight between the night jet and a Goodyear dirigible, her scene cuts to the office of Commissioner Charles Wetman as he interviews the widow of the late Rusty Stain, who fell victim to what appears to be a serial killer. So, uh, Mrs. Stain, I would... Please, Commissioner, call Miss Scarlet. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, very well, Scarlet. Uh, w would you be aware of anyone who had grudges against your husband? <laughs> oh, uh, forgive me, Commissioner, but I would have thought that would be obvious, as the prime suspect would have to be my ex-husband. 
who's never gotten over how Rusty stole my heart from away from him and his failed life. And my husband is, of course, nowadays going by the supervillain identity of the Fraser. Well, that's where you're wrong, Miss Scarlet, I'm afraid. For you see, our investigation has revealed that your ex-husband, better known as the Fraser, has quite the rock-solid alibi. He was robbing a jewelry store on the other side of town. While your husband, unfortunately, was being murdered. Uh, well, th th that's ridiculous. I mean, who else would freeze a man to death? Other than the freezer. I mean, I, if he didn't do it himself, he did, well, he must have hired someone to do it. We're using his technique. Yeah, but why would he hire a man to kill his victim in a manner that would make it appear that he did it himself while at the same time establishing an alibi? Well, I don't know. I'm not an investigator. That's your job to figure these things out. I mean, my God. Why are you questioning me? <laughs> no, no, Miss Stain. I mean, Scarlet. There's no need to be upset. We're just trying to figure things out that don't make sense. Now think again. Is there anyone with a business relationship perhaps with your husband who might have had an axe to grind against him? Or perhaps you. <gasps> Me? Don't say what? another word, honey. <gasps> who the hell Daddy! are you? Wait, I know you. Boss Carbuncle. Actually, Commissioner, my name is LaRouge Carbuncle. I'm a respected businessman in these here parts, and I do not at all appreciate anyone trying to bestow upon me a title meant to disparage my good name. Well, well whatever you want to call yourself, this is a police investigation, and you're interfering in it. Uh, actually, Commissioner, uh, it is upon our duty to ensure my client's rights are not violated, and so we're not interfering in anything other than maintaining constitutional rights, but which she, of course, has. Who the hell are you? I'm Martin Purple, attorney at law, and I will be representing Miss Scarlet Stain here. And, uh, per further counsel with me, she will not be answering any more questions, either now or possibly in the future, short of a warrant from you. I warrant. think this whole interview is out and in. But, but, no buts about it, Commissioner. Have a happy new year. The hell? Yeah, there's way more to this than meets the eye. And she called him Daddy. That, that means... Scarlet Stain was once Scarlet Carbuncle, a member of the Carbuncle crime family. All right, Commissioner, you better get to City City Center. Huh? Ah, come on, really? I still got time to make it there to be there with the mayor for the New Year's Eve festivities? <laughs> uh, uh, no, Commissioner. I it's night night. He appears to be attacking City City Center with a giant Goodyear blimp. What? And at that moment, high above City City Center, is the Goodyear blimp constantly being darted by swoops and turns of a crescent-shaped night jet. <laughs> that blimp is shooting at his night jet! Ah, shut up, Bubba, and stop crying, you moron! Scary. With my expert aerial acrobatic skills, they'll never put a scratch on my <laughs> night jet! Oh, God! 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 Simply slide in and with the sharp edge of my crescent shaped wing of my neck jet, I'll tear his idiot blimp a new hole. <laughs> and soon the night jet does just as Night Night described, but suddenly a huge billowing clouds of pink smoke come forth from the blimp. Huh, all that pink smoke coming out of the blimp. It sure looks like the same type of smoke Pink Elephant uses to make people go cuckoo. <laughs> no shit. Oh, we just released the Pink Elephant's gas from all the people down below gathering for New Year's Eve in City City Center. Oh no. Yes, the Goodyear blimp does crash into the middle of the City City Center festivities of New Year's Eve and with the Pink Elephant's hallucinogenic gas raining down on the populace, they all begin to immediately freak out, some stripping naked and cavorting around, all kinds of nutty things happening, even with the mayor getting naked as well. But fortunately, uh, beyond a few scrapes and bruises and no loss of life, not much harm done except for some 
you know, property damage and whatnot. But, hey, while all this was going on, back at the Carbuncle Estate... Damn it, Daddy. Why did you have to come in like that and reveal my familiar past? Because I'm head of the Carbuncle family, and what I say goes. Things are getting hot around here, and I'm the one to manage it. And you, my little girl, are gonna keep your mouth shut. And stop showing off like you're ashamed of where you came from, damn it, damn it. Oh, damn it. Oh, did treat me like I'm only ten years old? Oh, damn it. Oh, first Rusty, now this. Uh, uh, what? What do you want? Oh, damn it. What is it? Uh, you. You're, you're the pink elephant. What, what, what are you doing with that gun? No. Oh, 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 oh. Did she say pink elephant? But how can the pink elephant be here murdering Scarlet Carbuncle when he's over in City City Center in the midst of the Goodyear Blimp's wreckage? Hmm, perhaps we'll find out in the next year in another episode of Night Night. This has been a Nail Sin production. The Night Night theme song is performed by Alistair White and his lovely wife, Heather. Incidental music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. All characters are performed by me, Douglas Nelson. Join us again, won't you? And now, it's time for City City News Special Report Now Live. Because if it's not now, it's not live. Good evening, I'm Peter Hungiel. Tonight, we take yet another look into that strange criminal career of the costume supervillain, the Pink Elephant. As most city city citizens know, the Pink Elephant recently engaged in a terrorist attack upon the festivities of New Year's Eve, along with his cohort in crime, the Flying Pig. However, recently, while still within police custody, the Elephant found himself on the other end of crime as the victim, as a fellow inmate suddenly attacked him. Many suspect this could have been a revenge attack due to his dealings with the underworld of crime. And so, we are currently awaiting as he is to be transported from the county lockup to Pineville, the home for the criminally insane where they do have the necessary medical facilities to deal with his injuries and keep him safe from further harm. We go now live outside of Precinct 69 where our man on the street... Holden Cox is awaiting the transportation of the pink elephant. Holden? Uh, Peter? Uh, the uh, ambulance that is set to transport uh, the pink elephant uh, arrived just about five minutes ago, and uh, we're just waiting for, uh, well, the, the officers to uh, transport uh, the pink elephant to the ambulance. And, uh, oh, oh, the doors are opening. Uh, it looks like, looks like d d yes, that is the pink elephant. Uh, laying back uh, on the stretcher, uh, they're opening the doors to the ambulance, as you can see for yourself on the footage, and, uh, oh, no, 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 gunshots! Oh, multiple gunshots being fired at the ambulance! Oh, God! Oh, oh okay, uh, 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 okay, uh, Peter, it looks like, uh, the police were prepared for this and, uh, managed to have it under control. Uh, looks like the shooter, uh, has uh, been gunned down, um, possibly uh, deceased, I don't know. They are securing him at the moment. The ambulance is uh, on its way. Uh, it appears the pink elephant uh, was secured within it. And, uh, several uh, uh, armored uh, squad cars are, 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 are following it and uh, on its way to Pineville. So, uh, looks like uh, whatever, this was another attempt on the life of the pink elephant. Uh, right here, live, uh, and uh, exclusive to City City News, Peter. All right, Holden, good work. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by as we take a pause 
for some messages from our sponsors. <laughs> After watching a display like that, what one? This has been I have no choice but to once again call into question your judgment. What the hell are you talking about, Night Night? It's obvious that I should have been involved in the security detail on the transportation of the pink elephant. The security detail worked like a charm. None of the officers were harmed, none of the, no civilians harmed, the prisoner himself was unharmed and sent to Pineville. Meanwhile, the actual hitman is on ice. Then, Dallas the Donuts will tell you that he was probably one of Carbuncle's guys. Yeah, what? no doubt about Carbuncle. it, Chifo, really. Seems Carbuckle is determined to believe that the Pink Elephant had something to do with the death of his daughter, Scarlet Stain. Scarlet Stain was Boss Carbuckle's daughter? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I figured that out over New Year's. <laughs> Why wasn't I told? I just told you. Wait a minute! How come that carbuncle guy thought the pink elephant killed his daughter? Ah, well, because the security footage over at the carbuncle estate appears to show the pink elephant gunning her down on New Year's Eve. What? That's impossible! Because that's right at the same time we were taking the pink elephant into custody! You mean when we took him into custody? Well, that's what I said! We! Obviously! Our notorious, mysterious, imposter serial killer! Has struck again. Yeah, apparently the same guy who's been posing as certain costume supervillains while committing murders since Halloween. Seems this killer favors certain holidays. Thank God we have time to plan a strategy for the next holiday. <laughs> Not really. Today's Valentine's Day. What? Oh no! Exactly! And that's why I'm terrified! Great gauges! It's the porker of piracy! The flying pig! What are you doing here? Finally going to turn yourself in for your involvement in the New Year's Eve attack with your idiot boyfriend? Well, that's why you're wrong, Night Knight. That wasn't me in the attack, but rather my ex girlfriend, Maiden Mud, who, as you know, has the ability to shapeshift, and so she impersonated me in order to frame me for the crime. But I had a rock solid alibi, which the police now understand. Yeah, it's all true, Night Night. What? Turns out we already had the flying pig in custody because she was busted driving drunk with an expired license. And and she was about to be let out of the drunk tank when uh, the attack happened, and then, well, I guess Maiden Mud must have shapeshifted into one of our officers and made good her escape. In the meantime... Good the, lord! Uh, that makes it clear! Right. Who our yeah. likely suspect yeah. is Able. for okay. the crimes right. committed yeah. by... Right. Maiden Mud! Yes, that's what I was going to say! Yeah, yeah, so Maiden Mud is now our prime suspect, so we're gonna put Flying Pig in protective custody in the hopes oh, that she no. could be a witness certainly to our abilities. No way! And Whatever the motive forget it, here is, you can so, take your protective uh, oh custody boy. and shove it. I mean, look how good it did for Pink Elephant. Oh no, I'm not going to be another victim for this deranged maniac. So what exactly are you going to do, well, Pig? Night, night. It's the only place I'll feel totally safe is with you. <laughs> what? Come on, forget it, lady. Your charms may have worked on me once before, but whatever I felt for you has long since been dropped like a turd in the bowl. <laughs> Oh, dear, is that so, huh, Night Night? Well, once again, your tights betray you. What? what? Oh, 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 Night Night, get a motor! Oh, 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 it's you. You've always been my knight in shining armor. Uh, and where else will I go? I have nothing well, else. Only this skin tight pink uh, flying pig outfit on my body that needs protecting. Oh god. Well, I know this has to be a trap, but I can't help myself. It's as if the very air about her is intoxicating. I... Oh, 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 oh. Meanwhile, as Night Night struggles with the raging lust that dwells within his loins, we find yet another potential romantic encounter somewhere in a cheap motel room. 
I don't know, boss. I got a bad feeling about this. I don't pay you for feelings. I pay you to do what I tells you. And I don't want none of you idiots peeking in on my business with the manx. So now beat it. Okay, boss. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah that's what I hear. Eh. Ah, uh, there's my goyle. Uh, all dressed up in your little outfit. <laughs> you know, who says I ain't no romantic? This sure brings back memories. Back when I knew all about your criminal dealings in your days as district attorney. In order to keep it quiet, you had to perform some favors for me. And here we are again now that you're a costume super criminal on the run from the fuzz. And you need a little help to be hidden. And I need a few favors from you too on how to get into Pineville so I can get rid of that damn pink elephant. But that won't be enough to pay the debt. No, no, I'm still going to need some old time favors from you. So why don't you come on in here in the light, unzip that suit, bend your ass over so I can put it in your shitter. <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, wait, what's with the gun? Hey, no, no, oh! Boss, what is, oh my god, boss. Hey, look, there's someone going through the window. Damn, mister! Wait, she left her wig behind. Then it... It wasn't really the Manx. Yeah, it must have been an imposter. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Will we ever get any answers in this case? Well, with Night Night on it, <laughs> it's probably gonna take a while. But perhaps we'll find some more clues on St. Patrick's Day. This has been a Nails In production. The Night Night theme song is performed by Alistair White and his lovely wife, Heather. Incidental music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. All characters are performed by me, Douglas Nelson. Join us again, won't you? <laughs> <laughs>